Board. Planning Board. Um, let me just run through the agenda for this evening. We have two items on the consent agenda, Accent Dry Cleaners, Site Plan, Change of Use, and the Hamlin Street Resource Protection Permit. Under Old Business, the Goldcrest Trails Recess Protection Permit, which is a request by the Town of Cape Elizabeth for a permit to construct trails. Uh, and the McFarlane, Peter and Jennifer McFarlane, request for a private access waiver. Under other business, um, we originally were to have scheduled a public hearing on the uh, sewer subdivision road and zoning ordinances for tonight. The notices did not go out in time, so therefore that public hearing won't be held till next month. However, if anyone is here to comment on either the sewer subdivision road or zoning ordinances, uh, I will take comment tonight uh, if, if you so desire, so you don't have to come back. The same goes for the Fort Williams Master Plan, which again, the notices did not go out in time to have a formal public hearing tonight, but if anyone is here that wishes to speak on that issue, we'll gladly hear you so you don't have to come back next month, and obviously we will incorporate everyone's comments um, after the public hearing. So uh, let's begin with the minutes of the previous meeting. Everyone's had a chance to look at that. We have a motion. Yes? Move we accept the minutes of June the 17th. Seconded. That's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay. Um, there is no correspondence to identify, therefore we can move on to the consent agenda. First item is the Accent Dry Cleaners Site Plan Change of Use, request by Ingrid and Niels Norin uh, to amend the previously approved site plan for 303 Ocean House Road to change the use from Category 2 Business Office to Category 3 personal services in the town center district. Uh, let me just remind the board that as a consent agenda item, uh, if uh, anyone on the board wishes to have a substantive discussion of this issue and hear from the applicant and answer questions, etc., cetera, a uh, motion must be made. So um, is there anyone that wants to take this off the consent agenda? Okay. Uh, do I have a motion then? Yes. I have a motion David. for the board to consider findings of fact. Ingrid and Nils Norn are requesting an amendment to the previously approved site plan for 303 Ocean House Road U21-9 to change the use from Category 2 Business Office to Category 3 Personal Services to open a pickup and drop-off center for accent dry cleaners, which requires review under Section 19-9 site plan regulations. No exterior changes to the building are proposed. The application substantially complies with Section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and the material submitted and the facts presented, the application of Ingrid and Nils Norin for an amendment to the previously approved site plan for 303 Ocean House Road, U21-9, to change the use from Category 2 Business Office to Category 3 Personal Services to open a pickup and drop-off center at Accent. Cleaners be approved. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. Okay, the motion's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor of the motion? None opposed, and that carries. The second item on the consent agenda is the Hamlin Street Resource Protection 
permit request by Joseph Fustacci for an amendment to the previously approved resource protection permit for U-2950 to expand the building envelope. Uh, again, this is on the consent agenda. If there is anyone that wishes to put this on the regular agenda and have substantive uh, discussion, I would need a motion. Okay. Uh, hearing none, then we'll proceed uh, on the consent agenda. Do I have a motion? Yes, Barbara. Motion for the board to consider findings of fact. Joseph Fristashi is requesting an amendment to the recently granted resource protection permit for lot U29-50 to expand the building envelope by adding the approved lot to an adjoining grandfathered lot, which requires review under Section 1983 resource protection regulations. No change to the previously approved resource protection area alterations is proposed. The application substantially complies with Section 1983 resource protection regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Joseph Rustasi for an amendment to the recently granted resource protection permit for a lot U29-50 to expand the building envelope by adding the approved lot to an adjoining grandfathered lot be approved. Do we have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion? Okay, none opposed, and that motion carries. That takes care of the consent agenda. Uh, move on to old business, which is the Goldcrest Trails Resource Protection Permit uh, request by the town of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, if we can first have the applicant summarize the changes to the plans. Thank you. Uh, my name is Steve Harding. I'm a town engineer. I also work for Post Associates. Um, there really haven't been much much for changes to the plan. Would you like me to do an overview of whatever the board? Yes, I think that'd be helpful. Thanks. Okay. Um, basically, it hasn't changed since uh, last month. Uh, we are seeking an RP1, RP2 wetland uh, approval as well as an RP3 floodplain approval. Um, the trail system, uh, as you see out here, this is really the third facet of the Gulf Crest uh, master plan for development. The first part was to, to create the public works facility. Uh, the second part was the recreational fields. And now this third part is the uh, trail system, which we've designed to connect with other trails in, in uh, town. Basically, there's a system of existing trails out there. And what we're trying to do is enhance those existing trails and also add new links in uh, various areas which will make this trail system more uh, usable with the area uh, around, the, around the Gulf Crest development. Um, we're constructing new boardwalks, we're replacing bridges, uh, we're also uh, asking the board's permission to potentially widen trails in the future for uh, cross-country and Nordic skiing uh, in areas uh, that uh, the trails pass through wetlands. Uh, in total, we're requesting uh, an impact of 10,850 square feet. Uh, the specific trails, there's the Null Trail, which is basically a cross-cut cross trail that we'll be using. Uh, it's a boardwalk with uh, a four-foot boardwalk section with two areas of two-foot wide boardwalk sections. Uh, the Outer Loop Trail, which is basically a, a trail that goes around the whole perimeter of the parcel. Uh, basically, we're looking to improve an area here that's very wet uh, by creating a boardwalk area and three uh, short bridge replacements. Uh, the total span of the bridges is about 58 feet. Uh, we're also creating a Fowler Road connection. This is a connection that's been uh, made available to the town uh, through the purchase of a private easement. Uh, we've got a section here, a four foot wide boardwalk that will be implemented. This allows people to connect to uh, trails around the, uh, the Great Pond and over in the, this area of town. Uh, we're also uh, proposing to do the Spurwink River Crossing Trail. This is a trail that will cut from the areas, uh, the trails right on site to an existing town center trail, which is centered on the uh, existing sewer. Uh, this is an existing trail that we'll tie into. Uh, basically, what we propose to do is have a six-foot boardwalk going across the marsh and then to an eight-foot wide bridge and then onto a section of boardwalk. And this section will be on the land trust parcel, which we've received permission to do. 
and then that will lead to allow uh, pedestrians to connect to the, the uh, town center and the schools that are in the town center. Uh, we are asking for waivers of uh, some requirements. Uh, the site plan scale, from the scale of one, one inch equals 100, one inch equals 200. We did that so that you could better see the trails in relation to the surrounding areas. Uh, we're asking for a waiver of the topographic mapping. Uh, we're not doing any regrading. We're simply working with the existing terrain that's there today. Uh, we're also asking for waivers of high intensity soils mapping and wetland mapping by hydrology. Uh, the high intensity soils mapping uh, it really isn't relevant in this area. What we're doing is uh, proposing uh, improvements to existing areas that are poorly, uh, have poor soils conditions by nature. Uh, this wetlands mapping, we have done uh, wetlands mapping in through the Gullcrest parcel, um, very detailed and then uh, less detailed through this area, but there are areas in that uh, mapping that uh, anywhere where the trails go, we've, we've uh, defined those areas for you. Uh, and then final, the final waiver we're asking for is formal, formal stormwater runoff calculations. All the boardwalks are going to be elevated, the bridges will be elevated. We don't feel that we're altering the stormwater conditions enough to uh, that would warrant that uh, analysis to be done. Uh, with that, I'd be welcome to answer any questions that you or the public may have. Thank you, Mr. Harding. Um, at this time, uh, we'd like to open the public hearing on this application. So uh, if anyone is interested on commenting on uh, this application, please. Identify yourself and say where you live, and we'd like to hear from you. Yeah, hi, my name is Jonah Rosenfield, and I live at 243 Spurwink Avenue. And I'm here as a representative from the Conservation Commission of the town. Uh, and I just want to sort of uh, say that we're in full support of these changes, and that we looked at the plans, and it's part of the master plan, and that we are in full support of, of what Steve has recommended. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Muzzy Barton. I live on Gordon's Lane. Um, I've been involved with the Cape Nordic cross-country ski program for the last six years and been a middle school volunteer, middle school coach. Um, I'd also like to voice support for the uh, Goldcrest um, trail system. The only addition I would might plea for is that we, with the Nordic ski community, really would like to see some of those trails, if not all those trails, but some of those trails be wider than I think the initial proposal, which was maybe for, I don't know, Steve, six or eight feet. Um, with cross-country skiing, um, there really is the need for a little bit wider trail. Um, and we hope to utilize those trails for our middle school and high school programs for training. But perhaps more importantly, we really envision these trails down, down in the future to be utilized by the whole community. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Twinbrook facility up in Cumberland, but that's a uh, recreational facility that was developed by the town of Cumberland that has trails that are for Nordic skiing as well as regular community use. Their trails are about 10 or 12 feet wide. They do use those trails for their cross-country ski training, for, for competitions, but also for their whole community, and it's been a terrific success. You can go out any time during the winter and see many people out there in Cumberland, and in fact, some Cape Elizabeth residents utilizing the trails. And we would really hope that um, those trails might be made wide enough to be utilized more suitably for cross-country skiing. You certainly can cross-country ski on a, on a more narrow trail, but for training purposes and for grooming purposes, and uh, the Cape Nordic uh, Ski Team and Booster Club has looked into the purchase of grooming equipment. In fact, Rob Yokabaskis is here, and he may speak to that in a minute. But um, we are looking very diligently into the possibility of developing the ability to, to groom some of those trails and we were hoping that they would be made wide enough that we could do some of that grooming. Um, it's a, a terrific um, program and, and plan that we have, and I, I, I think, I hope that um, we might make it suitable for both regular trail use as well as uh, cross-country skiing. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen.
gentlemen. I'm Robbie Babaskis. I live at 45 Hennifer Cove Road in Cape Elizabeth. Um, I'm kind of new to cross country skiing, and uh, Muzzy has uh, more experience, had a lot of family members in it, and has been very successful. Um, we have uh, kind of tailored our program off of what um, Cumberland is doing, and we've been working there with uh, some of their supervisors in charge of uh, grooming. And they've actually let us take their groomer, and it's at the high school now at the tech department, and they're going to um, make a copy of it for us. They're going to have two high school students next year have it as their program to develop some grooming equipment for us uh, for those trails, because what happens in the afternoon to the middle schoolers is because of the time that they get out, and by the time the sun goes down in January, it's very uh, small time for them to practice by the time we travel from Cape Elizabeth to Cumberland on a bus, um, the training time is very limited. So we would like to be able to enhance that by using our own trails. Now, uh, we're probably going to shoot ourselves in the foot by saying, you know, this past winter, if we had every winter like this, uh, we'd have great conditions. And uh, here we are making a, a groomer and a commitment to this. But hopefully, if we continue to have winters like we had this past winter, um, we could have an outstanding program. And this year, we had a record number of kids I think Muzzy would agree um, on the team. And um, if we had it more visible in the community, I know a lot of people can see it. And I know a lot of people um, do go to Perputic and um, take advantage of that uh, uh, beautiful um, vistas that they have there. But I think the Gullcrest uh, trails are even prettier than that if we kind of could groom down along the water. So that's our goal uh, for the year. And I hope that we can't have the bridges wide enough because the uh, groomer has wings on the side of it so that when you do go over a bridge, uh, the wings can be folded up so that as long as the bridge is five feet wide, we can make it over it. Um, and that's what the snowmobilers usually use as their, um, as their standard is five feet. Uh, but for cross-country skiing and for training, as Muzzy alluded to, you need at least 10 feet wide or 12 feet ideally um, to, uh, you know, to make the trails groomed properly in both directions so that the kids don't get um, volume down into a small little feeder trail going across a small bridge because it, be it couldn't be utilized for competition like uh, they have at Cumberland. So um, I'd like to you know, uh, roundly support it. Um, and also some of the Bill Coke skiers that ski on Sundays could also make uh, use of those trails if uh, you know, that would uh, also be a deciding factor for them. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Emily Vanderhine from Westminster Terrace. Um, I'm very interested in this term grooming. Um, I personally do not see that the idea of grooming these trails um, is just for the Nordic cross-country skiers. Uh, I think it encourages the snowmobilers, and I do not think that snowmobiling, Nordic skiing, and passive recreation, which includes walking and dog walking and snowshoeing, are all mutually compatible, even given the large space at Go Crest. Uh, that is my real concern about grooming large trails. Um, I also am concerned because I think we're talking about uh, winter trails and winter access, and I would like to see someone address the issue of all season access. At the moment, there is no trail down there through the meadow. It would not be so hard to put a six-foot trail down there. I know we're all concerned about the bobolinks, no one more than I, but um, I do think that there should be an all-season plan so that walkers, dog walkers, nature lovers uh, can enjoy that property. We pay taxes for it. Uh, we should have an enjoyment of it. Uh, last year, there were several incidents down there with snowmobilers that had the potential to bring a lot of liability to this town. And I personally do not see why we are inviting that kind of liability onto Goldcrest when across the road there is a huge field where snowmobilers can have their activity and other people can have their activity, which is less of the liability 
down on Gullcrest. So um, those are my remarks. I also um, feel that um, you, you have to feel that if this really is passive recreation, um, the disruption of the habitat down there with winter activities has to be taken into consideration. Um, and I think um, that rather than inviting more activity, we should keep the activity to the local community, not advertise it as a destination for more activity. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Marilyn Sherry. I live on Starboard Drive, which I guess makes me basically an abutting property owner. Uh, I understood that this meeting was to comment on the application to construct 7,100 square feet of new bridge and boardwalk improvements, in quotes, at Gullcrest. It, the property was purchased for passive recreation. Widening trails is not necessarily improving them. It's doubling the amount taken away from the natural setting. The gentlemen have just said that, in fact, they truly do not need a swath of 12 feet for cross-country skiing, walking, hiking. The town is, in fact, not bereft of cross-country skiing area. The poor farm is just across the street from Gullcrest. Other areas in town allow cross-country skiing. There are 335 acres of Crescent Beach State Park, more than a quarter of which are usable at no fee for cross-country skiing. There are 29 other state parks which allow cross-country skiing, all-terrain vehicles, snowmobiles, you name it. Three of them are within one hour of this town. Um, not everything has to be right within our little sandwich. <coughs> um, Steve Harding has said that we're not going to widen the trails to 12 feet, but we'd like the ability to do so. If we weren't planning to widen the trails, none of us would be here. You don't need permission to do nothing. Even though you're not going to widen the trails, that potential 25% reduction of vegetation that's discussed is not replaceable. You can't make wildlife habitat. You can only destroy it. When you take away 25% of the habitat, you take away more than 25% of the wildlife. One of our passive recreations for men of, many of us is observing it. The flowers, the small animals, the shorebirds that used to come. When we take away their habitat, they aren't here anymore. The wetland impact of this project is 10,820 square feet, correct? This spot on the marsh has been dwindling in wet area over the years. Some buildings have been allowed. Neighbors and landscapers use it for dumping yard waste. The rushes and the loose stripe show that the change in wetlands to drier lands is occurring. We can't afford to deliberately take away any wetland. And, and finally, I'd like to speak about the effect on my quality of life, mine, my neighbors, my husband's. This year we had no glossy ibis at all. The cranes and the egrets are fewer. What we have in their place is snowmobiles at 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock at night and later. They're noisy and intrusive. We have youngsters who can't see above their steering wheels but are unsupervised on their four-wheeled vehicles on summer mornings. Between 6.45 and 7.30 on a weekday morning, we have the sound of the diesel engines and the beeping of backup when the town garage and school buses get started. Um, during an hour, Sunday morning, I watched a woman on a bicycle accompanied by an unleashed dog, three dog walkers who were not from our neighborhood, um, one of whom came with an unleashed dog, and later there was soil on my front lawn. 
So we wonder if you would intrude on others. This is a small part of town. Um, the request is out of proportion to the need, and we need to concentrate on preserving that little piece rather than taking it away. Thank you. Hi, I'm Carol Fournier. I live at 7 Starboard Drive. Um, I have the same concerns that Millie and uh, Marion have, but my biggest concern are the snowmobilers that I've been increasingly using that town center trail. And I'm, I want the bridge. I use the trails almost every day to walk my dog, and the bridge would be a nice addition to it because I can't get to the trails in the summer because there's no plowed, there's no mowed trail. However, the snowmobile, I'm just afraid the bridge will invite more snowmobilers, and if it is going to go through, I hope you will include some restrictions on the use of snow by snowmobilers. And I also have a question. If, if the trails are going to be built, are they going to be exclusively for the Nordic skiers? It seems like they're going to have exclusive use of these trails, and I just hope the public continues to have free use of the trails um, year-round. Well, that's all I have. Thank you. Yes. Gerald Sherry, 19 Starboard Drive. I live across from the marsh. One of the reasons I live across from the marsh is that it is beautiful. The marsh is getting filled in by people dumping their lawn waste into it. Pretty soon we'll have no marsh. Now, I had not planned on being here tonight. I just happened to turn this on television. And where I've been hearing two foot wide paths, now I'm hearing people ask for 12 foot wide paths. Well, that's an extra 10 feet of natural land being taken away. I have no objection to people going across country skiing. I don't feel that they have to have competition paths 12 feet wide to do recreational skiing. I understand that I believe it's Cumberland freely allows our people to take and use their 12 or 14 or 20 foot wide paths, whatever they may be. Wonderful, I appreciate it. I appreciate it more than you will know. But what are we losing? We're losing natural surroundings. We have no birds except for the goldfinches that we feed in our backyard. I don't see any small animals. When I moved in about four or five years ago, I saw numerous deer. It is now an occasion if we see a deer. I don't know what other wildlife we have lost as we are slowly encroaching on that marsh area. I don't want it encroached on anymore. I'm selfish. I'm selfish for my wife. I'm selfish for the other residents of the lower part of Starboard Drive. I'm selfish for the residents of this town who are losing something that you cannot get back. You cannot build marsh. You can fill marsh in eventually and put in piles and put buildings up. If that's where we're heading, say it. We're going to fill the marsh in, we're going to put in concrete piles, and we're going to put housing or commercial business or whatever on top. But don't nickel and dime it away. That's what you're doing. You want some walking trails? Wonderful. I'm known as a great athlete. I have athlete's foot. That's where it ends. I don't walk. But I would not say that other people should not be entitled to. But I think we get to a limit where a two-foot walking path becomes a 12-foot skiing path, which really should have been 20 feet wide in order that we get everything in. 
And it's wonderful to those of you that have not had the opportunity to be awakened at 4.30 or 5.30 or 6.30 in the morning to the sound of either the snowmobiles in the winter or these four-wheel, whatever they call them, ATVs during the summer. And as my wife said, driven by kids that can't see over the steering wheel. Now, this is our town. It's not your town. It's not my town. It's our town. It's our marsh. It's our parkland. Do you want 12 foot wide trails that we won't be able to use because here comes the ski team. Quick, get off the way, get out of the way. Step in the marsh so they can go by. If this is where we're heading, tell us. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very quickly. Yes. Um, just, uh, first of all, getting back to the trails, um, certainly the Nordic community has no intentions of optimizing those trails and only using them exclusively for competitions or for our teams. Um, we really would hope that these trails could be developed for everyone to use. And um, I really would implore people to maybe get it, if they get a chance, to get up to Cumberland and see what these trails look like. We're not talking 20 feet. Um, certainly 12 feet would be nice to have. Maybe we can't have 12 feet, but um, a 10-foot wide trail, a 12-foot wide trail is not an, a huge trail. It's not a wide trail. And we certainly would hope that these trails would be, be able to be utilized by um, snowshoers, by winter walkers, by summer walkers. I'm also a runner and a walker and a hiker and a birder, and I would love to utilize these trails all the time. And I think I speak for several members of the of the uh, Nordic people. But I really think that, um, you know, we are talking about passive recreation here. And, and yes, the cross-country ski teams might utilize those trails for several hours um, during the week. But it, again, it would only be, you know, afternoons uh, during the winter time for a couple hours. And certainly um, that use of those trails um, in, no way, in no way would optimize um, the time that they, they could be utilized. And certainly if, if there was such a high demand on those trails that we needed to restrict the hours, possibly that could be done. But um, I really envision these trails as, in fact, perhaps solving some of the snowmobile issue. I think that there are snowmobilers in our community that do want and need to have some trails. But I would think that the Nordic trails would not be trails that would be utilized by regular um, snowmobilers. That's certainly the case at Twinbrook in Cumberland and throughout the Nordic community in the state. Cross-country ski trails are generally not used at all and in fact are forbidden to be used by regular snowmobilers and that would be what I would envision with our trails. And, and we may not be talking about necessarily needing to make all of these trails 10 or 12 feet wide, but um, I think for what it would offer to our kids and to the whole community, I think there are, there are many benefits, and we certainly do not do not want to encroach on our environment. But I think that we can have 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 the best of both worlds if if we could 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 do that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this issue? May I? Yes, quickly. I've listened to this gentleman from down to 20 feet, to 12 feet, to 10 feet, telling us, well, maybe we can restrict the use of those trails only to the afternoon during the winter. Wonderful. What if my wife wants to take a walk? Are they going to take it? Wait for her to walk? Are they going to blow their horn? Beep, beep. Here comes the Nordic people. <clears throat> the original proposal was, I believe, for two feet. Leave it at two feet. Don't take and try to carry, cater to a small 
minority of the town. Don't listen when they say, well, we're only going to take this much space, so we're not really doing much damage to the environment. And gee whiz, we're not going to allow snowmobiles on those trails. You have an officer there all day? Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, close the public hearing. And Mr. Harding, uh, I'm sure we have some questions. David? Steve, I just had a couple of questions. That, one question in particular that was brought up through this discussion. Would you, would you recap exactly what areas you're talking about in this particular issue that we're discussing tonight? Certainly. Um, basically, what you have before you is the proposal to construct and improve several trails. Uh, the outer link trail, the outer loop trail, is a trail that goes all the way around the facility. We've got a section in here right now that is uh, there are three short bridge spans. One is, I believe, 20 feet long. One's 30 feet long, or thereabouts. Another is about 10 feet long. Uh, those are in pretty rough shape right now. What we propose to do is simply replace those bridge sections. and we're replacing those with six foot wide bridge sections. We've got an area through here, it's very wet. Um, there's uh, pallets, there's logs, there's uh, a lot of uh, kind of a homemade design of a boardwalk through there. And what happens in this time of the year when it's very wet, people walk along and because the boards and the logs are in wet areas, they keep sinking down, so people keep trying to jump around them. So what's happening is the trail's actually, the impact's actually widening there. What we're gonna try to do there is clean that up and basically put in a six foot wide elevated boardwalk. And all these boardwalks are intended to be 18 inches or so above the ground. Uh, so that, that basically is the improvement to the outer loop trail. There's a connection through here to Fowler Road. Uh, that was done by a private easement. There was a lot of discussion when the town purchased that easement from the group primarily at Fenway. We're very concerned about snow wheelers passing through there. Uh, that in, in the easement is for pedestrian use only. Uh, and that was done primarily to help, help these people in this area with uh, their issues. Um, there will be a four foot wide boardwalk here, but that will be restricted. No snowmobiles will be allowed. There are no ATVs allowed on the Gullcrest parcel right now. That was another comment that came up. Uh, I'm not sure about town-wide, whether, you know, if you have an ATV on your private land, how that works, but uh, I assume that's some kind of an enforcement issue with the town. The other area that we're creating, the boardwalk, is this uh, knoll trail that cuts across this marsh area through here. In that area, we're proposing to put a two foot wide, we're calling a rustic boardwalk. It's basically two 12 foot planks that are rested on log sleepers. And we're showing those as being the approach to the boardwalk, which is gonna cross over the marsh. That's gonna be a four foot wide section. Again, that area would be restricted to snowmobilers. Um, it wouldn't be allowed to be uh, for the snowmobilers. We're um, also creating, we're not asking you tonight because we don't have an impact that's related to a resource protection, but we're also proposing as part of the uh, master plan is to build this outer loop trail section between the transfer station and the water treatment plant. Uh, basically that's allowed uh, an, another loop system to be created through here and to give uh, users a, an opportunity to explore that area. And then the final area that we're proposing to create a trail is a connector trail that goes from the trail system at the Gullcrest to the existing town center trail, and that's the Spurwink River Crossing Trail. What we're proposing to do there is to build an eight foot wide bridge, 20 feet long, and then have two six foot wide, or excuse me, have six foot wide boardwalk approaches coming to that in either direction. Uh, the other part of this uh, approval that we're asking for tonight is the ability to at some point um, have to come in and widen the trails that exist today uh, to a 12 foot wide width if the community can agree on where those trails should be. Um, we heard a little bit of discussion tonight about the Nordic Trail people and the people who are more for passive recreation. 
we didn't hear from the snowmobile contingent, but believe me, there is one out there. Um, and that's one of the things that the Conservation Commission has uh, been trying to deal with as part of this master plan, plan permitting effort. Now, rather than come to you every six to eight months and ask for an approval to build a boardwalk or to widen a trail, what they'd like to do is have this master plan approved so that they have the ability mm -hmm. to work with the council and the users of the facility to come up with a plan that would have, hopefully, address the snowmobilers, the passive use community, and the Nordic ski, ski trail community. No decisions have been made where to actually put the cross-country trails or to widen any trails, if any. Um, but what they would like to do is to have that ability to make that decision in the future. And that's what they're asking tonight. But, but Steve, is this, is this, does this master plan exist and before us now in terms of, uh, I guess I'm having trouble trying to trying to define what it is you're seeking in terms of the ability to widen trails when we don't know which trails may be widened, we don't know how much may be widened, we don't know where they may be widened, and it's at least difficult for me when we're looking at something as specific as a resource protection permit to say that's fine even though we don't know where, where any of it is. So uh, maybe you can help me. Well, as Jonah mentioned, the Conservation Commission has been working pretty diligently on this master plan for some time. There was a master plan that came before you, I want to say last summer, um, that has, has been adopted by the council. And it has these um, trail improvements in it. It also carries language about snowmobiling and cross-country skiing. And what, what we're proposing to do, what the commission would like to do, is have the ability to widen a trail to 10 to 12 feet if it can be determined where that trail is going to be. And I would assume that it would have to go before the council. As you can see, there's a great uh, deal of opinion on various sides. And I think it's a decision that's you know, it's going to be made on a town-wide basis. What we're trying to do is lay the framework of having the ability to make that decision in the future without having coming back and to discuss that with you folks again. Barbara. I'm afraid that I, I agree with John that it's a bit too nebulous to just say we want to have blanket approval to do this. And if you have to go back before the council and the Conservation Commission has to consider it, I don't see any reason why the planning board can't be involved in the process too. This is a very, some of these are very touchy items. And while everybody wants what they want, I mean, I, I'm a Nordic skier and I can understand why the Nordic skiers want what they want, but then I look at why do we have to put in 12 foot wide trails? And I can understand keeping something in its natural state. I think the plan, the way it has been presented to us, has been thoroughly researched and looked at, and I think it's excellent. We have some two foot wide sections, some four foot wide sections, one eight foot bridge, and some six foot wide boardwalks. And I think that will meet many people's needs. And we can look at how does this work after a couple of years and then perhaps reconsider as a town what we want to do next. I don't think we have enough information to make any decision more than we're making right now. Other questions? Andy. Andy. Start from there and work away. Thank you. I guess I share some of the same concerns that Barbara just voiced. But I think I look at it differently. We're not being asked to set policy. That's what the council and the community will do. I think we're being asked to set the parameters under which that policy can be set. And if you look at the application before us, which is just for resource protection permits, I think it's a fine application and one that we should approve. Having said that, I'm just as uncomfortable as you are and probably some of the people in the audience about 12-foot ride trails or loss of habitat or exclusive use by one group in the community to the exclusion of others. But I don't know that we have to make those decisions here. I think that's a council and community decision. So I think we ought to move forward with the permit application as proposed, knowing full well that no trail will be widened, nor any one group given exclusive use of these trail systems without the full vetting at the council level. <laughs> what he said, I agree completely. <laughs> uh, what, I, what we've experienced over the past few years is every time one boardwalk is going to be constructed. We have an application, we go through this procedure, and it seems a little silly. And I think at one point in a uh, workshop we had asked whether 
gee, are we going to get a master plan so we don't have to keep uh, reviewing these applications one at a time, inch by inch, foot by foot. I think the plan is excellent. I share the concerns of a lot of the people that have spoken tonight. I don't think there's any intent, though, that the cross-country ski community wants exclusive use, nor, do the snow, nor does the snowmobile community or the nature lovers. I think that's an issue. Balancing the needs of those particular constituencies will be an issue for the Town Council and the Conservation Commission. I would vote in favor of the, of the plan as presented. Uh, this evening, and then those issues as to use could be considered at a later date. What, what my more senior board member said, <laughs> I, I agree completely, and, but I'm looking at this as what it is, which is a resource protection permit application, a master, a master framework, to use the engineer's uh, expression, I think is, is very accurate, and all the policy decisions that we're all talking about here you know, write to your council member, show up at the meetings there to decide what's going to be constructed, whose interests are going to be protected, whether we're going to have our restrictions, all the other things that we heard about tonight. Are, I share every single one of those concerns, but that's not what's in front of us tonight. It's, it's to address the issue that Dave just addressed, and that's we can't be in here every time for every boardwalk. Put, put the framework in place, and we'll all show up at the council chambers in front of the council to address what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. Barbara. I think what we are being asked to consider is our three, essentially, um, areas of resource protection for permits. And we're talking about a specific area that is affected, a certain number of square feet. So when we approve this impact on this area, we are only approving resource protection for that amount of square footage. So essentially, we are not offering any more than what this plan is showing at this point. At least that's what it seems to me. No, that, I, I agree with that. But that doesn't mean they have to build out that much. They're just... No, but, but that's what is being affected on our charts and on the information that we've received, unless I'm reading this wrong, Maureen. Is that correct? that you're being asked to grant? We are being asked for resource protection permits that affect 10,000 plus square feet, which does not include any more for potentially widening anything. No, that's the, that's the total width with all the widening, isn't that, Steve? That is with the, with the right. estimated widening. That's the, that's oh, it the is with the estimated Yeah, that's the absolute okay, maximum. I'm misreading it. Yeah, there's the alteration represented by the boardwalks and the bridges is uh, 7,170 square feet. The uh, widening of the trails is 3,650 square feet for a total aggregate of 10,820 square feet. I'm sorry, but I don't think I'm reading it that way. If you look at the chart on the first page, it says the total impact is 7,170 square feet, and that includes the square footage and the lengths and the widths that are given. I'm looking right here. I've got a... Well, it isn't 10,000. There's, there's, there's a table right over the, um, uh, the um, title block that breaks that down. I believe it should say... 7,170 square feet of alteration, and then below there should be a widening impact. The widening of existing trails is 3,650, and that allows for 10 to 12 foot widening what, on a number what of. What that allows for is a, a 10 to 12 foot widening in areas of wetland impact, and there's also there's areas oh, in wetlands that you wouldn't necessarily be cutting out vegetation. There's places through here where the uh, trails cut through fields that you would need to be taking out any trees. So what we've, what we've done is we take a 25% factor based on walking out through there and looking at the trains and looking at the trees and to see what, you know, what potentially would be uh, impacted if the what trails were widened through the wetland areas. Thank you, because I did misread it. Questions? Anyone else? Um, I'd just like to say that we, I think we all have to remember 
what our role is here and what the things that we can and can't do. Um, if, if this board tonight started making decisions about snowmobiles can't go here or can go here or this is the use that the Goldcrest should have, I think we're going way beyond what we're allowed to do and we'd be told that very quickly by the town council. Um, we're here to review the application that's before us on the resource protection permit. I understand that we are also being asked to grant what I would characterize as a prior approval to further changes to this plan in areas that have not yet been defined. Um, as far as the use and how it's used and by whom and how often, that's not before us and frankly we really wouldn't have the ability other than by trying to say, you know, we're going to limit the size of the paths to prevent certain uses, um, that, that really isn't within our area of responsibility. So just so everyone understands that, um, what's before us right now are very specific improvements to the trail system and a request to grant a prior approval to additional widening of trails in areas that will be identified later. My, my view on that is this, and I'm not sure it's shared by everyone. The, the town council, as you correctly pointed out, Steve, is going to wrestle with all those issues of use and who uses it and how often and, and even width of trails because it affects use and so forth they're going to make decisions on that. That will very well come back to us as a planning board issue in terms of in these particular places given the effect on wetland or another resource protection permit or whatever it may be, will you approve these alterations? And at that point the other issues will have been settled because it's not our job to settle them. We will then look at those issues, I would think, in the narrow context of what we're charged to look at. What, you know, is the wider trail here appropriate or not? Um, I don't think that's going to add a whole lot of time or effort to what I think is going to be a fairly full and, and robust debate and tough decision by the council anyway. So I guess I don't see the need right now for us to pre-approve uh, a lot of changes that aren't specified because I think a lot of those issues are going to get discussed and, and decided and then what will come back to us will be what's appropriate to come back to us which is okay these are the improvements we're proposing in these places. Um, I'm just trying to understand, so what you're saying is that uh, if we were to deny this request, you're saying we're going to see those, then we would see. No, the, I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying it, it, I, would, I, would, I would be in favor of granting the application as presented. I would not be in favor of pre-approving additional widening in places that have, has not yet been specified because I think a lot of that is going to be decided more or less by the council because of lots of other issues. Then when that's decided and those issues come back to us, I think it will be in a more definite context that we, then we could address. Meaning that the council will put parameters on that before they send it to us, before the town asks for an approval? Probably. Okay. I'm just uncomfortable with approving something that's not defined in terms of place or how much or all that. But these permits and just this is not the Conservation Commission's master plan, so to speak. No. It's it's still a subset of that. Is yes. That, okay. Yeah, Dave. I just want to be sure. I, I thought the the plan that was before us did provide for the ability to wire the trails to 12 feet. So if we were to uh, make a motion that's been drafted by the town planner, it would allow for the, wi the potential widening, and I just want to be sure that's correct. 
Without further action. Without further action by the planning right. board. Correct. The, the application before you is for all the improvements that Steve has described, plus the option to widen all the trails out there to 12 feet. Right. So if we just wanted to ap approve the application before us, we would have to add some language that would limit it to that application alone without the ability to widen the trails. Now, how we do that, you and Andy are good about figuring that out. But. Well, actually, I would, <laughs> I would not be in favor of doing that. Not that I don't want to draft another amendment. Uh, <laughs> as much as I enjoy it, uh, I would be comfortable uh, with the concept of pre-approval because I think that issue will be thoroughly debated in the Town Council and the Conservation Commission, and I don't see the need to come back to the Planning Board. And that seems to be more of a policy type right. issue than a planning. I'm trying to grapple with the same thing as you are. One of the questions that came up was, I think it was the implication was, how come it's only an additional 3,000 square feet if you're going to widen all these six-foot trails to 12 feet? And I think the answer is, it's only an additional 3,000 square feet in the wetland where a permit is required. Mm -hmm. But there's already a Gulf Crest parcel. There's already an approved master plan. The Council and the Conservation Commission, at their will, without any uh, action by this board, can put 15-foot wide trails in the areas that aren't wetland. Right. That would be a policy decision, but it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't require further planning board approvals. Am I right? Yes. So we're looking at a very specific subset of it. And really, I think, I look at it that we're, we're giving the Council a blank slate with which to work with the Commission and the community to decide what's the best use of this, of this resource in our town. You know, with, within the wetlands area. Right. But, but would they be taking into consideration the things that we are supposed to in terms of expanding in the wetland and so forth? I guess that's my only concern. They may very well make policy decisions one way or the other, but if it then comes back to us, again, within the narrow purview of what we're looking at, which is, is it appropriate in this wetland at this particular place to widen? we would look at the same issues we're looking at now as to whether that's appropriate. If we say that's fine wherever it may be, are those bodies going to also look at the things that we normally look at? And I'm not saying it's, it's going to be different, and I'm not saying we're going to change the decision, but are they going to take those things into consideration? I don't know. I, I think if we approved this application as submitted, we would be giving the town, you know, certainly working through the town engineer, the approval to construct these boardwalks and bridges at the best location of their discretion at the time. Because it's sort of a field locate kind of thing. We haven't got the specific mapping of exactly where something's going to be, but we know we want to put the kind of, of structures in that minimize impact that's, and put that's, it in the best place. That's the difficult thing right now, not knowing where the trails would be widened if they were going to be widened at all. And then basically what the Conservation Commission has done is take a very hands-on approach to any trail widening, any vegetation removal. So they would go out and walk the trails and, and work with the communities that wanted it widened um, to, to you know, take out just the limited amount of vegetation that they can. It's always been their policy. So that's one of the reasons we can't give you a, a hard set plan right now. And like you said, it's a field, almost a field decision. So this would not necessarily come back to us again, even if uh, some years down the road a decision was made to pursue widening a particular trail, as long as it was within the constraints of this. Unless process. we exceeded the 3,600 square foot, 3,650 square foot figure. To understand something a little bit better, Steve, on your 7,170 square feet of improvements, mm -hmm. boardwalk and bridge. Is that hard and fast? Is that figure firm with what you're planning on doing now? Yeah, basically what we took is all the proposed lengths and widths of boardwalks and the bridges and figured out the square footage based on that. So, so the questionable part of it then is widening existing trails that are within the wetland area, exclusive of putting any more boardwalks or anything like that in. Yes. So in terms of widening these trails, if they were ever widened to 10 or 12 feet, and there would be areas that would be only six feet wide anyway, or four feet wide, or perhaps even only two feet wide. Not all the trails would be wide to 12 feet. I don't think that's anybody's intention. I think some of the trails 
there are openings where they do they do open up. Uh, in some of the areas, you might have to take down one or two trees and you get that that area. Other areas, you but in some areas, you have already proposed boardwalks and in one case a bridge and they're sort of that's, fixed in terms right. of how right. wide that, they are and are also fixed so that limits to some degree what you can do in those areas according to the plan now otherwise you'd have to come back to the planning board that's with another correct. Proposal. And we've also we're, we're also applying for DEP permit one of the things that they uh, make us go through is an avoidance and minimization um, step and that's why we've we have some of the boardwalks you see are two feet wide some are four feet wide some are six feet wide to go through that, that process with them and uh, you know we've kept the, the boardwalks that potentially could have snowmobiles on them or could potentially be used for maintenance equipment we've kept those at six feet but the areas particularly going across the Knoll Trail and going through with Fowler Road where we know there aren't going to be any mechanical equipment allowed on them we've narrowed those to four feet and the Knoll Trail portions of that are only two feet um, and that's what we're trying to do. Thank you. Can I? Yeah. yeah, for the conservation yeah. commission. Yeah, sure, you can. I, uh, I can't speak on behalf of the conservation commission because I'm a new member, and so I, I wasn't around when they were developing the master plan. So what I'd like just to sort of say is something based on my interpretation of what's been going on. I've been on it since January, and that is that um, the, con the, the conservation commission has no preference for what happens in the future right now in terms of the widening and, and improvements. But sort of my interpretation of what's been going on is that we've sort of kept this open for the process to happen in the future and that we're not stating any sort of, or we don't have any sort of agenda or any sort of um, goals for it right now, but that we just want the process to be able to happen. I just, some of the things that I've heard it just has made me feel a little bit like conservation already knows what they're going to do and there's all these widening plans. And I guess I just want to make it clear that from my own interpretation, I can't speak for the whole council, but that there's no, there's no plan, but we just want to have the process available in the future. Thank you. David, did you have a question? Just to put this in a little perspective here, um, just we're talking about 3,600 feet, square feet. If you were to widen uh, 700 linear feet of trail, five feet, you'd eat up to 3,600 feet. We got a lot more than 700 feet of trails out there. So. It's a very small part of it that we're talking about, the 3,600, and it's RP2 wetland that, that we're only concerned in. So I don't think we're giving them carte blanche to open all the trails to 10 or 12 feet at this point. I think we're only giving them the opportunity to adjust the trails in RP2 wetland to at least do some conservation. That's the way I interpret it. I, I was going to ask Steve that question. But the difference between the what's proposed and what you're seeking approval for in terms of future changes is about 3,600 feet. Basically, what we did, and we get to that 3,600 square foot. As, as Mr. Griffin said, this this area and through here is, is pretty much boardwalk, so we're not going to be wide. We're not going to be asking for any the board for any more. Uh, area in through there than we already have. Same holds true with the Knoll Trail. So you're really only talking about this specific area through here, and a good portion of that has boardwalk on it, <coughs> bridges, and these little uh, segments down through here, some of which go through um, uh, open grass fields, so there really wouldn't be any vegetation removal required to make the trail wider. Um, so basically what we did, we took those linear footages, took a 25% factor, and and we, we did that, you know, walking out with Maureen. We've also taken a couple of people out from the DEP and talked to them about it, and that seemed to be a, a, a conservative number. Uh, so that's basically how that 3,650 square foot figure arrived. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Ready for motion? Go ahead. Motion for the board to consider findings of fact. Number one, the town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting a resource protection permit on an RP3 permit to construct trails and trail improvements, including bridges and boardwalks on the Gulf Crest facility located off Sperlink Ave, which requires 
Review under Section 19-8-3, Resource Protection Regulations. Number two, the application substantia substantially complies with Section 19-8-3, Resource Protection Regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for a Resource Protection Permit, an RP3 permit, to construct trails and trail improvements, including bridges and boardwalks on Gulf Crest facility located off Spurwink Gav, be approved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion on the motion? Um, all right, I'll, I'll just say that I. I'm going to vote against the motion, not because I'm against the proposal, which I think is a very good proposal, but I'll just restate my position that I would rather approve the specific plan in front of us, and when a specific plan is developed for additional improvements after a lot of other review, uh, I'd be happy to look at what those improvements are within our um, context. So uh, just so we know my position. Uh, anyone else? Okay. All in favor of the motion? Opposed? Carries. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is a private access way permit request and resource protection permit on behalf of Peter and Jennifer McFarland to construct a driveway for a lot located off Gladys Road, U19-29. Uh, for the applicant. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. My name is Bob Metcalf. I'm with Mitchell Associates, and we're representing Peter and Jennifer McFarland on this application. Uh, since the last time we were before you, some of the comments were to evaluate looking at shifting the private access way within the 50 foot right of way, uh, which is the Paper Street portion of Hampton Road that was never approved. And between the comments, staff review, as well as the benefit of the site walk, we have redesigned the, the layout in this to center the access way within the center of the private, uh, within the center of the uh, existing right of way and accommodating the grading requirements that the town engineer recommended in terms of doing a uh, center line cross, instead of a cross pitch, we have a uh, crown uh, slope situation as far as the roadway, ditches on each side to accommodate runoff coming off of uh, the proposed roadway. And as part of that, we've had to install an additional culvert that would come in underneath the access drive here in order to convey water from the side of the driveway or roadway. Uh, as a result of having to relocate that, it required the impact of some of the RP2 wetlands that are associated with that drainage way that comes uh, from the end of where the storm drain comes in from the uh, structured system out on uh, Gladys and Hampton Road. Uh, we did have a meeting with DEP on site, uh, Don Buecher, uh, to evaluate the situation and her interpretation was it is a drainage ditch. It was considered a stream uh, situation, which is what Mr. Harding was concerned with at the last time we uh, presented the application. So the only issue we had is in regards to fill, uh, to accommodate the drainage and grading, 
and uh, we're looking at a little over 1,000 square feet of wetland impact to uh, achieve the grading changes. Uh, the other aspect of the change, uh, the previous application uh, design, we were also, in addition to asking a waiver request of the width for the emergency turnaround width of the roadway, we had one, our inside radius, we were asking for a reduction from 20 to 15. By realigning this, we can meet the 20-foot requirements, but we still are requesting a reduction waiver to a 14-foot travel surface with 18-foot wide cross-section and have two-foot gravel shoulders on each side. Uh, we have uh, extended the water service main down in discussions with Portland Water District. The nature of uh, just serving essentially two lots, it's to increase it to a four-inch line that comes down and then a one-inch service that would come off to serve the McFarland property and in the future if this back piece over here uh, were developed, uh, then they'd have the ability to get access for the uh, for water service. And as far as power service is concerned, as we described before, we'll be coming overhead to a pole here and then underground to serve the McFarland residents if another development occur on the other side to be able to come from that same pole with an underground service as well. Uh, subsequent comments to what we resubmitted. Uh, Mr. Harding raised the question about identifying the pipe that's actually being utilized as well as a clarification on the existing storm drain pipe that's coming in. Uh, on the survey plan it identified at the CMP, uh, it is actually a transite pipe, uh, which is a little softer material it won't use any longer. And what we'll be doing is coupling on a new uh, polyethylene smooth core pipe, which a lot of is the standard today. It's a lot lighter weight material to use and uh, has the durability. It would be extending the, the storm drain with that, and the same thing would be using the same pipe for that cross color that would come across from one side of the roadway to the other. Uh, Maureen had asked the last time around that we define the building uh, envelope, uh, and what we have done is modified that. A clarification of the graphics to indicate that the building envelope is a combination of the required setbacks and the distance setback from the, uh, the edge of the wetlands. So it actually defines the limits of where the actual structure uh, can occur. Uh, the plan I believe you have in front of you also has the name of the roadway as Merrill Road or Merrill Lane. I can't remember. Uh, subsequent to that, we uh, were requested to go back and speak with the chief to see whether Penny Lane was acceptable, and Chief Williams notified me about 20 minutes after I submitted this to Maureen that Penny Lane was acceptable, so we have revised the present plan that the name of the road would be Penny Lane. Uh, I think that's... Did you ask the Beatles if that was okay with that? <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's a family. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> it's not right. after the podcast, isn't it? <laughs> Anyway, uh, I think that addresses the comments that staff had had from before. I think the biggest issue from the last time around was shifting it into the center of the right of way. Okay, thank you. Responded to those questions. Um, at this time, uh, this is scheduled for a public hearing on this application, so I will open the public hearing. Is there anyone that wishes to speak? Okay, seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. Um, all right, does so anyone have questions? Yes, Mr. Charles. There's a comment about a resource protection permit um, in the town engineer's letter. Am I correct that that's not required? A DEP permit? Or town RP permit. But Maureen, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons the applicant had uh, offset driveway was to avoid a drainage ditch. Disturbing and that high value RPQ that's wetland. Right. Now that the applicant has moved uh, the traveled way, at our request, they are disturbing the drainage ditch, and it does trigger the need for a resource protection permit under our regulations. Um, I did not prepare a checklist to deem the application complete for a resource protection permit. However, your memo does include, I believe, an evaluation of the standards of review um, for the resource protection permit so that if you were to act on this application tonight, you would be granting both a private access way permit and a resource protection permit for this project. Does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. Uh, I would be in support of that as I would be in support of the requested um, reduction in road width to 18 feet travel way or 18 feet total, 14 foot travel way. And I think the applicant has done a lovely job of responding to the concerns expressed at the sidewalk. Thank you. 
Yes, Barbara. I would just like to say the same thing. I think that you have been speedy and thorough, and it's well done. David? Uh, I, I would also like to say that I had prepared a discussion before this drawing came through of uh, maybe an alternative, but it's a waste of time at this point. But um, I, I don't know one other question regarding the turnaround and the approval by the uh, chief. Did, did he provide you with a letter stating that? No, he did not provide us with a letter. <laughs> I, uh, um, I, I can respond to that. Um, it has been the practice in the past of applicants to uh, directly address the fire chief. Uh, it's now been suggested by other town staff that the fire chief withhold his approval until the formal application comes in and he reviews the plans at the same time as the police chief and the public works director and the code enforcement officer. So my guess is we will not be seeing those individual letters in the future and he will be doing the review the same as those other department heads do the view, review, which is silence is affirmative. So if we're approving a plan that doesn't comply with the dimensions that are typically yes does that, that put us out on a limb or or do we make a, any comments in regard to the fact that but it's he he's in the circulation now he's in he, the loop he, he was before oh he's, it's okay he's, he's now part of the team <laughs> <laughs> so if you're comfortable i'm comfortable I was in the room when, when both the uh, town engineer and the fire chief looked at that and agreed that that turnaround, this one particular place, should be okay. Okay. Actually, in Mr. Harding's review, he makes reference yeah, to I, that. I, know, I know he did. It's I, in here. I saw it twice. It. I was just curious. Just to Something the town planner has reminded me of in the past. Nothing is final until we sign the final plot plan. And we won't sign it without the fire chief's approval. Wait to hear his silence. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chairman, may I propose a motion? Yes. Motion for the board to consider findings of fact. Peter and Jennifer McFarlane are requesting a private access way permit to construct a driveway for a lot lo located off Gladys Road, U19-29, which requires review under Section 19-7-9 private access way permit and section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Number two, the plan depicts a building envelope which meets, which needs to be defined. Number three, the application substantially complies with section 19-7-9 private access ways and section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Peter and Jennifer McFarland for a private access way permit and a resource protection permit to construct a driveway for a lot located off Gladys Road, U19-29, be approved with the following conditions. Number one, that the plans be revised to address the comments of the town engineer in his letter dated 7303, paragraphs 4, 5, and 6. And number two, that a note be added to the plan that no structures will be located outside the building envelope and that the wetland located outside the building envelope will not be altered. We have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor? None opposed. Again, I'd like to echo my thanks to the applicant. I think you did an excellent job responding to our comments. Good luck. I have one question on behalf of the applicant because this has been a longer process than they ever anticipated having started off on their own trying to figure out where to go. And being such, they want to be able to try and get going on the project. Uh, the only thing I haven't changed on the plan is the note which Maureen and I discussed and having the survey of seal. I will be able to make that change and probably have to sign a stamp mile or return to Maureen probably before the end of the week. The question is when we went to that, get that to the board for the signing so that they proceed with necessary permits. Uh, in the past, uh, if an applicant was in a burning need to have a plan signed before the next meeting of the board, which would be the first Tuesday in August, I have asked if board members would be willing to stop by the office or I, I could come and meet you to get mm -hmm. collect a signature. So we could do that. That's we could have. do that. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. I have to pay my, my 
I'll come by. Um, I guess we don't have to worry about the taking comments on the, unless, is anyone here on either the sewer amendments or the um, master plan for Fort Williams? That's, yeah, that we've already done that. that was, yes. Okay, um, so no comments on that, so we don't have to worry about that. That's on for public hearing. Do we have? Yeah. Okay. We need a motion to put these on for public hearing for, uh, for August 19th. Second. Both the uh, miscellaneous amendments and the Fort Williams master plan, right? Um, I'll tell you what, I'll make a motion. You can't, Be it ordered you can't that based that. on the materials and facts presented, the draft miscellaneous amendments to the sewer subdivision road and zoning ordinances be tabled to the regular August 19th, 2003 meeting of the planning board at which time a public hearing shall be held. Second. I like the way Barbara set up it. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor. Okay. Do we have to do the same thing? I'm going to vote against this motion. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll make another motion just because David said that. <laughs> Be it ordered that based on the materials and the facts presented, the draft Fort Williams master plan is tabled to the regular August 19, 2003 meeting of the planning board at which time a public hearing will be held. Move and second. All in favor? Okay, that pass. Um, one more little thing. On the, on the sewer amendments, everyone's gotten them. If, if everyone is okay with the way they are, we can just go right to the hearing unless people want to put it back on our workshop for August. Wasn't it, it wasn't just, it was deciding whether we agree that the version of the amendment as, as written, which includes a neighborhood map and all that, is the version we want to go forward with. Correct. And I would be in support of going forward with that version. I would as well. But since you and I were the only ones that responded to Maureen, that's why I was asking. I did too. Today? <laughs> Today. Okay. So we won't have a workshop. That's all right with everyone on that issue? Okay. And Motion. I'd, oh. I'd just like to state for the record, since I will not be able to be in attendance that night, that barring uh, some additional input from the public or other sources that completely changes the the take on these amendments, I, I think that it's a well thought out, thoroughly researched, an appropriate set of amendments, uh, as is the changes proposed in the master plan. That doesn't carry any weight, but I just wanted to say it. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else, Barbara? I won't be here either on for the hearing, and the and I I would also concur that I think it's well done, and we've listened to the town attorney and to the to the staff of the town and taken everything into consideration. Okay, very good. Do I have another motion? So moved. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Seconded. All in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you. Best as it needs to be.